If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 143 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. It's the January transfer window in 2020 and it's time to have a look at some transfer targets. Not a very busy January this month, fortunately. Last year we had a game like two or three a week at times. This year we get a slight bit more rest in the month, but there are a couple of midweek games, one against Newcastle and I presume if we get through against Northampton in the FA Cup, we'll have another FA Cup game towards the end of the month as well. But, uh, oh, we have been drawn against Athletic Bilbao in the Europa League as well. I've just seen that. It's the first time I've seen that. So we know who we've got in the first knockout round of the European competition. But the question is, what do we do in this transfer window? I am still trying to sell on a few people. As you can see, I've got Grezo listed, Mawat, Woods, Santian and Cardosa. Uh, Cardosa requested to leave because he's not getting any football, which is fair enough. Uh, we currently don't have that much a bigger budget or that sizable a budget. As you can see, it's, like, it's currently uh, at this stage. We have had added into that the £2 million we got for uh, getting through the group stage in the Europa League. So uh, at present, it's not that much. I could either try and pick up a couple of players really cheap or do what we did last year and get two or three really good players on pre-contracts for next season. As you can see, I can up my wage budget to 109000 if I want to solely do that. But uh, I'll let me quickly back out and uh, I'm thinking about it. I will quickly request funds. Obviously, we requested funds... Um, we, we yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I was just quickly reading that. I thought that was a, a message to me, but it's not. That's just the uh, the part of the uh, letter that we sent to them. We uh, see. I, I I don't really want to say qualify for Europe because uh, we could put knockout stage because we have got to the knockout stage. I'm going to say reach the quarter final of the cup and stay mid table. We've already asked for money. and They've already given us an extra three million. I think it was. They would have given us an extra three million at the beginning of the year, so I'm going to ask for another four now, and we'll see what they say. In uh, you know, obviously we'll get to that in the next episode or two when we actually advance. But I do have a few players on my uh, shortlist, and obviously I'm open to ideas in the chat. We've got a couple of players here that are still there from uh, the summer transfer window. Players like Thomas Callas and uh, Jose Maria Jimenez, and uh, obviously they're great players that we know are good enough, so I don't need to scout them again. It's just a question of if I do want to go and buy them, uh, then perhaps we uh, we need to wait until the summer because I won't be able to afford players of that quality. One player that's really struck me, though, is this guy, Matteo Masaccio. Obviously, you already know what he's all about, but he's only on 70 grand a week, and I can sign him on a pre-contract. Would that be something that we could go for? £70,000 a week on a pre-contract. He wouldn't come till next year, but 84 rated. I mean, he's 29 years of age, and his stats will probably start to drop in the next couple of seasons, but still, he might be very, very good to pick up. Uh, Wendell has always been on my uh, on my list. He's only on forty five grand a week, so we could maybe try and pick him up on a pre-contract, and then maybe let, if Santian does go, which we want him to, we can maybe let um, Andy Kellett go as well, and then we'd have Wendell and... Uh, Aaron Cresswell as our rotation left backs. This guy, someone that really struck my eye as well. Same as uh, Matteo Masaccio. Julian von Hack is a German centre mid. He's valued at twenty-eight and a half million, but he's only on ninety thousand pounds a week. So I could offer to sign him on a pre-contract, sign him next season, and then use him for a couple of years, and then sell him on for a massive fee. I could probably get like thirty plus for him if I was to bring him in and then sell him on. So I'm, I'm tempted to do that, actually, as well. Either either Masaccio or Van Haak. It's uh, something that we could look into. Then there's, there's this guy, Danny Pacheco. He's not on that much wage-wise, but you can see by his stats, he's very good on the ball. Not the fastest, but fast enough. But he can play in a variety of positions, at left mid, at cam, and at striker. So he might be a very good utility player. And he's only on 50 grand a week. So there are perhaps players like Wendell and Pacheco that we could look at to sign for next season where we could bring in two players, or maybe even three. And then there are people like Julian von Haak and Masaccio that we could bring in as like one signing and uh, and they might be great for the next season. Uh, then we move further forward, we've got Vladyan Yashenko, or Yashenko, uh, Ukrainian for Bayer Leverkusen. He's only on 25 grand a week at the minute and he looks decent. I mean, obviously I'm going to have to wait for uh, more scout reports to come back on him, but I think he could play centre mid as well. He can't. Cam and centre forward, but I could play him 
at uh, centre mid. I wouldn't have. To, I could always, you know, switch to a four-one-two-one-two or something, or change the formation up a little bit. But I like the look of him, and he's quite cheap as well. I'm not sure what his overall is though, so I might have to wait until we get a little bit more information on him. Uh, Christian Taylor is available on a pre-contract. The only thing is, he's on a hundred grand a week, so. I don't know. I really don't know. I could sign him, perhaps, and then sell him on next season. But I'd probably be uh, more inclined to do that with Masashi or Van Haak. Probably Von Haak, actually, thinking about... Or, you know, if I'm definitely going to do that. Then we've got a couple other players. Quezzi Appiah, obviously we want to bring him back at some point. And I could try and swap Cassida for him. Because Cassida does want to leave. So I could maybe use Fabian Cassida in a swap deal to bring Quezzi back to the club. Elias Kuchunga is another player we could look to bring in for next season. Uh, he is also only on 40 grand a week. So we could perhaps do Kuchunga, Pacheco and Wendell. Perhaps, maybe. I'm not sure. It depends if we can move anyone else on. Julian Brandt is available on uh, free as well. He's only on 60 grand a week, so we could maybe look to bring him in. He might grow a little bit more. Currently uh, 78 rated and uh, only 23 years of age, so there's still some scope for growth there. And then Yannick Ferreira Carrasco is at Chelsea. Unfortunately, this save was set up before he got his January upgrade. So uh, he got a big boost in physical stats in the January upgrade, and uh, he got he's got pace of uh, you know the mid to high 80s unfortunately here he's got acceleration and pace of the mid to high 70s because it was uh, you know before he got the big upgrade but he's on 80 grand a week I think if I remember correctly from when I just checked this contract he is so I'm not sure I'm really not sure can he play any other positions just left wing so it's another one that I'm really not sure about but let me know in the comment section what you think I could do obviously I'm probably going to go and record Monday's episode ahead of time because we've got plenty of time left in the transfer window to decide what to do with these guys. I think on tomorrow's episode I'll try and sell the players I'm trying to move on so we know exactly what we've got left so where you guys can give me as much feedback as possible so that Wednesday and Friday's episodes can be spent going out and buying the players that we think we should go out and buy. So uh, yeah, that's effectively where I am right now. I've got my scouts looking out for other players that are on uh, or that are running out of contracts, but as of yet, they haven't really brought me back anyone else other than the players we've currently got on the shortlist. And like I say, budget at present isn't that uh, healthy at all. So if we are going to go for pre-contracts, which looks like the best option as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, we've got about a hundred grand to spend wage-wise. Although a little bit more if the players that we are trying to sell on sell so if Grezo goes we'll get an extra 20 grand in the wage budget plus another 2 million ish to uh, to switch from uh, transfer budget to wage budget and then you know minimal for the uh, the other four but oh it's so it's such a difficult decision because obviously we're going to need players for the rest of this season and we are still missing Callum Wilson for uh, a while Michael Woods is actually injured at present as well let me quickly check the injury list and see how long both are out Michael Woods will be fit by the end of the month so he could get sold unfortunately Callum Wilson is still out for another four months he may be back by the end of the year by the end of the season he may be able to uh, to play again we'll have to wait and see four months will take us to the beginning of April so or the beginning of May so perhaps he might be back before the end of the season. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. But at present, that's the situation we're in. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I will take them all into account. And obviously, if you enjoyed the episode, drop the video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And for now, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time.